Well, good evening, church. Welcome to our midweek service here at Columbia Road Baptist Church. I hope your week has been going well, and uh, you're excited to be back in God's house to get refreshed and encouraged and encourage each other. And uh, this is a special service in our middle of the month, third Wednesday of the month. We always take time to pray as a church and split up, so we're going to do that. But we also have another uh, treat for you. Maybe you figured it out if you noticed Sister Hannah as you walked in today, but we're going to get an update from our missionary, and uh, that'll happen before we break to pray. So if you're able, I invite you to stand, and let's open our service in prayer before Brother Jim comes and leads us in a couple of hymns this evening. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the glorious day, the, the fabulous weather that we've enjoyed uh, here this week, and we certainly pray that you would meet with us now, Lord. This is a, a challenging um, meeting that we have on the third Wednesday of every month, it's, it, uh, it's hard work to pray. And Lord, there are many things that are on our hearts, near and dear to our hearts, that uh, we want to bring before you tonight. And we uh, are praying by faith, asking you to intervene in a number of health situations and places where we just need wisdom to know how to proceed. And so again, Lord, we, we look to you tonight. Please join us in this room and, and the various uh, other meetings that are going on throughout this building here this evening. Lord, may you be glorified and honored. May you be with Sister Hannah as she provides an update and of how things are going there with her ministry in Africa. And Father, again, we just uh, we love you. We thank you for all you do for us. And we ask your blessing upon the remainder of this evening now in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Brother Jim. Hymn 365, How Great Thou Art.
Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. going to sing Set My Soul Afire, Lord, <clears throat> hymn 319. <clears throat> Set my soul afire, Lord, for thy holy word. Burn it deep within me, let your Christ be heard. verse of Christ is all I need, hymn 22. <clears throat> one of our missionaries back with us to report while she's in country and so it's always good to hear what the Lord is doing and also to hear how we can best pray for her and it's it's neat to see God's not just working here in your life or just in your family or here in your church or in your community but he's working all over the world that's a good reminder 
It's a good reminder because we can feel like maybe things aren't going well here or maybe they feel like that in South Africa, but God is doing great things in this world. And so at this time, did you want to say anything before the video or play the video and then have you come up? All right, let's go ahead and, and play Hannah's, oh, sorry, this is Hannah Bennett. I know who she is, Hannah Bennett, our missionary in South Africa. So we're going to get an update and then she's going to give us a few remarks tonight. I remember hearing Hannah's voice as a little girl, how quickly she grew from a baby to a young lady. She loved God and had a heart to help the hurting. So it was no surprise when she headed off to college to study nursing. Our prayer for Hannah was that she would always put God first in her life. I will never forget the night she told her mother and me that she believed God was calling her to Africa. I chuckled and thought to myself, that'll never happen. Two months later, we were left in awe as we watched Hannah pack her bags to begin a four-month internship in South Africa. Could God really be calling her to leave America and go thousands of miles away? When Hannah returned home from her internship, it was clear that God was calling her to South Africa. God had given us a gift in Hannah, but she was never ours to keep. She belonged to God, and we were excited for the ministry opportunities ahead. Several years have passed since that day, and what a joy that our Hannah is now a faithful missionary serving in Port Elizabeth, South Africa. My name is Axel Carlson and I am both pastor of Calvary Baptist Church in Countersport, Pennsylvania, and Hannah Bennett's brother-in-law. We have had the privilege of being her sending church and her family. Hannah has spent many years working in our children's programs and has shown a genuine desire to see children receive the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal savior. We are excited to continue supporting Hannah's ministry to South Africa. I'm so honored that God would choose me to be a part of Little Fish Ministries. I started serving as a missionary in South Africa in June of 2018, initially working in school ministries in the city of Nizna, teaching health and also providing some needed first aid supplies to some of the schools. I also had the privilege of working alongside several different church plants and youth ministries. It was in the end of 2019 that the Lord started leading me in the direction of Brent and Selena Berge's ministry in the nearby town of Port Elizabeth. I have always had a love for children, but when I started learning about Little Fish Ministries, this new ministry that the Berge family had started, my heart began to break specifically for the abandoned children of South Africa. While on earth, Jesus always met a physical need in order to meet a deeper spiritual need. Likewise, my desire is to use my medical and spiritual background to not only meet physical needs, but spiritual ones. After a time of both counsel and prayer, I knew that God was calling me to work with Brent and Selena Berge and Little Fish Ministries. I moved to Port Elizabeth in 2020 and have been serving there since that time. Over the years, I have had the opportunity to love many children and most of these children have had parents who loved them. Now, God has called me to a greater purpose, to love the ones who have been abused, unloved, and left for dead. What is love, and why doesn't anybody love me? When a child asks, does anybody love me? I have the opportunity to share the unconditional love of Jesus Christ with them. Hi, my name is Brent Berge, and I'm a church planting missionary here in Port Elizabeth, South Africa. We are also the founders of Little Fish Ministries, 
a children's home ministry seeking to make a difference by meeting the physical, emotional, educational, and most of all, spiritual needs of South Africa's orphans. Millions of South African children have been orphaned or abandoned in large part due to the HIV AIDS epidemic. Every year, approximately 3,500 babies survive abandonment. But for every baby found alive, at least two were found dead. Studies show that 65% of abandoned children are newborns and 90% are under the age of one. The abandoned baby rate in South Africa is increasing at an alarming rate. Babies are being thrown away in toilets, landfills, garbage cans, dumpsters, and many other places where they are unlikely to be found. Just the beginning of this year, only minutes from our Little Fish Ministries property, the body of a newborn baby was found in a trash bag, thrown in a ditch alongside the road. God has provided almost 23 acres of land for Little Fish Ministries. It is on this property that we believe God will use the staff of Little Fish Ministries to love and nurture orphaned and abandoned children, and most importantly, share with them the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. It is our prayer that God will raise up a generation of Christian servants from the orphans in our care. Hannah has joined our team as a registered nurse with several years of experience in neonatal and pediatric nursing. Most abandoned children arrive with numerous health care needs, malnutrition, abuse, HIV, and TB, just to name a few. Hannah's nursing background and heart for evangelism are evidenced by her desire to serve. Immediately upon joining our team, Hannah became active in ministry. Whether it is serving in soul winning, discipleship and church ministries, working in music and children's programs, or utilizing her nursing and administration skills, Hannah is a valuable member of Little Fish Ministries team. Currently, Hannah is seeking to raise $60,000 to help build a medical clinic on property. This multi-purpose building will provide a clinic and office space for the ministry, housing for Hannah with complete accessibility to the children on the property, and housing space for our volunteer interns who come to serve with us. How can you help? You can pray for Little Fish Ministries and Abundant Life Baptist Church and our team members as we seek to help change lives with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Naked, afraid, hungry, cold, and thrown out like the trash. Little ones, we hear your cries and so does God. Well, good evening, and thank you. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your financial support. The, the, the video that you saw, you, you got to see some of what the Lord is doing and what our plans are for the future and how the Lord can use us there in South Africa, and you all are a part of that. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you for allowing the Lord to use you in that way. Um, a couple of updates. Abundant Life Baptist Church, first of all, started in December of 2019. So obviously when COVID struck, the doors closed. Um, however, it didn't stop the work. We were able to um, continue meeting through Zoom and even through the, the crisis of COVID, we were able to grow. And a year later, the church was able to meet again um, in, the pro in the church building again. And since that time, um, every week there's been visitors there have been six salvations, and just recently we had a baptism of five individuals. So it's, the Lord is working there. And actually, COVID has opened the door um, and the hearts of people um, to the need that they have for Christ. So, you know, God continues to work. Uh, another thing is, is the property, as far as what the Lord has brought in, um, as of right now, I have about 32000 up towards the, the clinic building and my housing. Um, a, a few things have changed as with missions, everything is constantly changing. And um, currently they're in the process of converting a stable into two um, housing, uh, basically duplex. One's for myself and one is for the other single missionary, Lorna Mitchell. And the goal is to be able to hopefully take in some additional children by the end of this year. 
right now we have one child in our care and until we have some buildings up and running and the and the the uh, yeah sorry the property safe we are not able to actually add more however every single week there's a phone call saying can you take a child so the need is great and so I would just please ask that you pray that the Lord would open this door of opportunity for us to be able to take in children quickly. Our, it breaks our heart every time we have to say no. Um, it, I know it's when you see the, the numbers, these are, not, these are not fake things. That The picture of the video, or on the video of the hospital, the maternity hospital with a trash can, um, caseworkers actually go there a couple times a day because the number of babies that are abandoned there is very high. So it, there's a huge need. Um, I would just ask that you please pray for me. I'm supposed to return July 13th, and the country has just gone into level three lockdown. So far, um, it still does not keep me from going back, but with every increase in number, they get a little more scared and they, they tighten it up a little bit more. So please pray that the doors stay open, that I can get back and, to, um, and really just hit the ground running. There's so much that needs to be done there and in the church ministry and in the children's home ministry. And um, again, I just, I wanna thank you. Thank you all for your continued prayers and support. And um, you know, just thank you for being a part of the ministry there. And please stop by, get a prayer card. If you're interested in signing up for my prayer letter, the easiest way is to just send me a, an email and say, please add me. Um, and then if you have any questions, please feel free to stop and and ask me and I'd be glad to answer. And thank you again. The Bible says in James chapter one and verse number 27, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. I know that, that church planting is extremely important. And if, unless we plant churches, we don't have the foundation that we need inside of societies for people to reach their own people. But caring for these little ones is, is truly a wonderful thing. And God is very pleased with that. And we're so thankful that we get to have a part in it. So thank you for what you're doing. I know it probably feels like you're forgotten about on the other side of the world at times, but you're not. I didn't know the Womacks were with you guys. That's exciting. I knew her, I think, in college for a brief time. That's neat. Praise God. Well, at this time, we're going to dismiss our young friends. So if you have children with you in here and they are ready to go and have their lesson on prayer in their prayer time, we have um, Anna, who's going to be our line leader over here, and the teens that are helping um, along with the adult workers that are already over there. If you want to have the kids line up with Anna at this time, if they want to go, that would be awesome. I think some of them went straight over there because like my kids are missing. <laughs> so I imagine they're already over there with the workers, but that's wonderful. All right, so very good. If any of the teens wanted to go over and help that, you're welcome to, to join them as well. All right, well, this is some of the most important time of our church is this prayer meeting. It's very easy to skip this meeting in fact, some people did skip this meeting. Some people showed up uh, and, and uh, they didn't even know it was going to happen, so I'm glad you're here. Some people knew it was going to happen and they just decided that's too much work, I can stay home and pray. But I want you to know that the corporate gathering of God's people together in prayer is powerful. It's essential. This is where I would say there's probably no greater work that's going to be done this month in this church than what's going to happen in this prayer meeting. And so as we gather together and as we pray, um, don't just sit there and wait for your turn, whether you're in a small group of ladies, whether you're in the room with the men and waiting for your turn to come around, be in agreement with what is being offered up before the Lord. Say amen, showing that you too want that as the other person prays that. Have your mind on what it is that they're praying. And I promise you that if you happen to pray while they're praying, God will still understand what's going on. You're not going to worry about talking over them or praying over them, right? So in your own heart and mind, you can pray along as that person is praying aloud as we gather together tonight. So, of course, let's pray for Hannah Bennett 
and for the work that she's doing, for the funds that they need for this clinic, and for what can happen through that, for God to help her with this lockdown situation because of COVID. So, uh, you know, it sounds like July 13th, you said, is far away. It's really not that far away. So time is marching along. So pray, pray that God opens doors and that she knows exactly what she's supposed to do and when, because much work needs to be done there. So let's make sure to keep her in prayer for that. I got word that Ningwan Kumra, one of the missionaries that we partner with and support through Brother Randy's work in India, his father had a stroke and is unresponsive. I haven't heard an update on that. This was a few days ago that I heard that, but pray for Pastor Ningwan. Um, as you know, things are not good in India anyway with COVID and, and how serious it has gotten. Um, in fact, the media and in the country is trying to downplay that from getting out as far, but people that we know have family there have told us it's pretty bad. So pray for, pray for Ningwan's father, pray for his whole family as they're dealing with that. Um, we mentioned before Debbie Gallagher is thankfully home and out of the hospital. They're keeping a close eye on her. They still don't know exactly how severe the situation is. So pray for that as well. You had a test last week, didn't you? I did. Any, any information? Half the report is good. I'm ready to go to All right, half the report is good. Praise God on Larry's test. That's good. We're praying the other side comes in as well, that that's good. Um, any, any prayer requests that people would like to add to our time of prayer tonight? Anything in particular? Maybe it's not on the prayer sheet or needs an update. Yes, Ben? Good. It's the real deal. For those of you that are watching or listening online, uh, Brother Ben Pastor is going to be going on a medical missions trip as an interpreter for a week beginning July 17th, and he's, he's going to the uttermost from the sound of it. And this is, and you said, mid -July, I'm, the country, I'm sorry, Honduras. Honduras. So pray for him, pray that the Lord, pray that uh, Pastor, or Ben Pastor works on his um, Spanish medical <laughs> terminology. <laughs> Okay, good. Amen. Good, let's pray for him that the Lord uses him and that there's much fruit from that. Chris, and then Dave will get you. One of our missionaries, Dan Jalowick's sister-in-law, passed away after they had just returned to the field, after Dan and his family had returned to the field because of COVID, so he's traveling back. Pray for him, pray for the family. Oh, Dave, in the back. It's true, it's true. Uh, Mark and Katie McElwraith, uh, they've been with us before, I think, a, a while ago. They happen to be coming through, and he, I think he sang for us. But they are um, they're planning a church in downtown Atlanta. And so that's very exciting, very exciting. Most churches have moved out of the, the inter, there's like a certain term that they use, but it's like there's a loop around Atlanta, and most of the churches want to get outside of that because of the, the um, poverty, the drug use, the, you know, the violence and things but that's that's where the light needs to shine so they're going to be doing that they'll be with us in october so we're gonna we're gonna see them but yeah they are starting their deputation so pray for mark and katie mcelreath as they seek to raise support for um planting a church in downtown atlanta yep brother steve mm-hmm Mm -hmm. 
continue to pray for Dina Zupik and for her husband John, especially as Dina cares for him and as he's in uh, this latter part as the Lord prepares to take him home. Let's hold him up in prayer. Anybody else have a request that maybe we don't know about or an update on someone? I just want to say that for the first time in a long time, I, I asked for prayer for my friend Dave Boehm a number of times. He had to have his stomach removed, and then they had to remove his, his spleen as well and his pancreas. Like just, and I saw him on Monday night for the first time, like up and around, and he's able to be around people again, and he has a bit of a compromised immune system. But it was just wonderful to see how God brought him through all of that. So thank you so much for your prayers. He's, he's, he looks a little skinny. Truth be told, but God is working, and so I'm so thankful. So thank you for praying for him. He's on our list, Dave Bowen. All right, well, what we're going to do is we're going to divide up. Ladies, we'll have you be in here. Gentlemen, we're going to head through this side door into this classroom over here, and we're going to pray together. And so no one prays by themselves. We want to make sure that everyone is in a group. Joan, if you don't mind helping with that to make sure that everybody has a prayer partner, and we'll make the Lord's house a house of prayer. If you have little ones that went off for their prayer time and their lesson and their game time, uh, you'll pick them up in the fellowship hall. Let me rephrase that. Please pick them up in the fellowship hall. All right. All right. <laughs> Very good. Let's make the Lord's house a house of prayer.